Okay, so uh, today we're taking the uh, FJ62 with the LS3 in it down the highway and we are going to the dyno. We're going to have the uh, engine dyno certified. We're using the Waze app right now to get us there to Loudoun, New Hampshire where there is a big speedway where they have a lot of NASCAR races as well as a lot of other uh, type of automotive uh, custom tuning type establishments there so we're driving down the highway doing about uh, oh, 65, 70 it's going smooth all the numbers are looking good on the uh, dash with our new gauge cluster so uh, we'll be there shortly and we'll show you the process So we're here with uh, Josh and uh, he's going to perform the uh, dyno on the truck and he has performance dyno here in the great city or uh, town of uh, Loudoun which is pretty famous here in America for uh, another raceway but uh, speedway. the speedway. Yeah. Uh, so tell us what you're going to do here. So basically we're going to strap the uh, Toyota down on the dyno so that we have a controlled environment and calibrate the computer for the setup that's here. So the internals of the engine are as delivered from GM as the crate motor but with the custom intake tubing and filter setup and exhaust system it will change and require recalibration and of course we're going to target things like the ignition timing tables for the preferred fuel you know whether it may be 87 or 93 91 or whatnot um, but probably the most critical part to really nail the drivability and the driving quality is making sure that the computer is calibrated for this mass airflow sensor and this is where a lot of ls swaps or crate motor applications um, you know, can require tuning even though the motor is as delivered from GM. It's this tubing and how the airflow through this tube affects the dynamics and the calibration. How do you think we did it uh, on the tubing here? This is custom great. made, so. Yeah, no, it looks great. And then having it in the middle of a, you know, like say eight to 12 inch piece of straight tubing, approximately three inch diameter, is, means it should be quite close. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, you have things like long term fuel trims that will kick in and help, especially at steady state but you may feel that the calibration is needed, especially on, say, transients, like in and out of the throttle. Great. Yeah. Well, great. We look forward to getting inside and uh, looking at some of the uh, numbers that you'll produce with this. We had the Land Cruiser in his building, and what he's doing is obviously tying it down so it doesn't move, and it rolls on this uh, big roller here. And uh, in order to Obviously, I'm not going anywhere. We have the wheels chalked in the front, and then uh, it goes on to this roller. Is there a name for this <laughs> roller? Uh, just the dyno. Just the dyno, yeah. Pretty simple, I guess. But uh... Right over here. What does this tool do? This measures the uh, air fuel ratio. Okay. So you can monitor that and dial that in. Air fuel ratio? Yeah. Nice. Setting up the software here to do the um, for the dynamics, we enter parameters about the vehicle, about the engine combination, and a lot of it is actually just note taking. Some of it is important for calibrating the dyno in preparation for sure. The tuning. Sure. Yeah. So you put the client's name. That way, if we have to call, we can reference it, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. Or running. Yeah. So you can sit in the vehicle and look at the dashboard. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely.
just do there? You brought it right up to... Yeah, one first initial pass with the calibration kind of as it came in to give ourselves a kind of working baseline, basically. Make sure it looks good. Now we'll start to actually calibrate the tube. Okay. Time you brought it up to about how many RPMs? A full haul from 2,500 RPM. Correct. To approximately 6,000. 2,500 to 6,000 RPMs, and that tells you and it's going to give you information for to see how the engine's operating. Correct. And what the air fuel ratio is, how it's responding, complete you know, full. Yes. And then from there, we'll take this information as our baseline and start to optimize it. So, you yeah. know, I did idle, startup idle, drivability a little bit in and out of the various gears and logged all that information and then logged that first, we'll call it dyno pull. And um, now I'll go back in the office, sit down and play around with the tune for a while to get our first initial you know, setup. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So you say the, the mass air sensor right now is, from, from the way it's set up, just the way I drove here, it's 50% Idle. At idle. And then as you taper into, as you load the motor up, yes. you bring the RPM up and the air flow up. Yes. Uh, so basically under high high load, it's about 20, 25% off. Okay. And, that kinda, and then at idle, it's off by like 50. All right. And that's just a function of how the air goes through the sensor with different sides and length tubes and all that. So it's not that it's, um, the sensor's not bad. Right. It just needs to be recalibrated for this configuration. Nice. Yep. Nice. So, Excellent. Perfect. I'm at so now we're in the office uh, after we just did this initial uh, run up. I call it of the engine. Maybe you don't call it that, but maybe you can explain uh, what you're doing here on your laptop. So basically, we're going to interpret the data that we gathered mm -hmm. and then we're going to use that to update the calibration for the engine controls. Sure. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, so we finished working on the, you know, our updated calibration file and we're now using the HP Tuner software to load that into the ECM. So there's no piggyback devices or anything like that for this. We're really going in and recalibrating the ECU that came with the crate motor, which okay. is a GM factory. Would that be just reflashing? Reflashing, that's correct. Yep. Once that's done, he'll uh, see how his calibrations came back out. Okay, so he's just explained it. The blue line here is the torque. torque. Yep. yep. The red line is horsepower, and the black line is our measured air fuel ratio. Yep. And of course, uh, we're going on the next axis here, it's RPM. So basically 2,500 to approximately 6,000 RPM. It's smoothed out quite a bit, you said, since quite original. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm actually overlaying the last pull, the one we just did. I see. That first attempt, we're probably like 95% there, but we picked up 28 foot pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. Yep. And if you go up, you know, 22 horsepower at 5,300, yep. air fuel is much better, so we're in good shape. It's cleaning up really well.